Serge Tankian is an Armenian-American singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, record producer, poet, painter, entrepreneur, and let's just say that he's done a lot of things throughout his life. But if there's a couple of things that he cares about more than anything else, it's gotta be art and politics. He's always been the type of person who wants to expose the truth and create a better world. And his most powerful medium for doing that has always been music. Most people probably know him the best from being the vocalist of System of a Down, but he's been a part of a ton of other art projects throughout the years. Let's take a closer look. Serge was born to Armenian parents in Beirut, Lebanon on August 21st, 1967. At the age of seven, he moved with his family to Los Angeles, California, and it was here that he attended Rose and Alex Polibo's Armenian school, where he met his future bandmates Darren Malakian and Shavo Odadjian. But it wasn't until he started going to university that he tried his hand on instruments and music and decided to form a band with his friends. In the early days, the band was known as Soil, and this is not to be mistaken with the other band, which is also known as Soil, from Chicago, Illinois. Anyways, the band featured Tonkian on keyboards and vocals, Darren Malakian on vocals and lead guitar, Dave Hakopian on bass, and Domingo Laranio on drums. Shawo eventually became their manager, but later joined as rhythm guitarist. Laranio and Hakopian left shortly after because they didn't believe the band would see any success, and of course, they were quite wrong. After switching band name to System of a Down and changing drummers, Serge, Darren, Shabo, and John went on to tour different rock clubs in Southern California where they quickly built a fan base. The band also achieved major commercial success. Three of their albums peaked at number one on Billboard Top 200, and although fans have various opinions of what the best system album is, because there's simply a lot of quality throughout all of their albums, there is one that has gained better ratings overall. Toxicity was released in September of 2001 and has been described as a more melodic effort compared to their debut album, but still features a lot of aggression and heavy energy nonetheless. As Darren Malakian said in an interview, Going into it, I knew Serge wanted to sing more, so I guess that was kind of a progression and an evolution for the band. I wanted to do all that, yet not lose the heaviness of the band, and I guess the hard punk metal aspect. You could lose that sometimes when you get a little too eclectic. So we were just trying to balance that fine line and not lose the fans. But Toxicity isn't the only album that displays the band's playfulness with genres. Throughout their discography, they've juggled alternative metal, folk, prog rock, jazz, Middle Eastern music, and even Greek music. Somehow, they managed to blend it all together effortlessly. Here's a few examples. Now, back to toxicity, the subject matter and timing of this album is probably what the fans and the band members remember most vividly. The album heavily criticized the US and their prison system, police brutality, rigged elections, and so on. And after a week after the album's release, 9-11 happened. And so, no one in the US wanted to play their songs on the radio anymore. Their first single, Chop Suey, for example, was a big success, climbing the charts after its release in August 2001, before virtually disappearing from airways after 9-11. The song's chorus, with its congratulatory, self-righteous suicide and lament, I cry when angels deserve to die, was considered a bit too raw for listeners at the time, in the wake of the tragedy. Now, Just a few days after 9-11, Serge was invited to the Howard Stern Show to defend a wrong paraphrasing of a statement he made a week before about the terrorist bombings of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. According to his memoir, he said everything that he needed to say without backing off, but would not respond to the detailed opinions of the hosts despite of disagreeing heavily. In his memoir, Serge wrote, At the performing complex by my hotel in Denver, 
I see a huge screen that plays God Bless America. I feel sick because I feel like I aborted my gut feelings for the first time in a long while and lost respect for myself in the process. I had many things to say about the abuses of US foreign policy in the Middle East, but all would have fallen on jingoistic ears among the listeners. Though I thought Howard would be amused. I live in the USA and I'm afraid to say what's on my mind because of physical threats and rhetoric directed against my band members and myself in this time of confused patronism. How ironic is that? I myself have vowed to never again hold my tongue. As you can see, Tankian has some strong beliefs and values about politics and the world in general. One of the causes that he's been affected by on a much more personal level is the Armenian genocide that happened in Turkey in 1915. Serge's grandfather was just a small child when he survived the genocide, and in the documentary Screamers from 2006, his grandfather told horrible stories of his first-hand experiences. My father, his father, his brother, all the men that were there, they tied them all in chains. We went closer to see him, and immediately a soldier came with a weapon. Away, away, he said. He didn't let us. I mean, I came forward to kiss my father. He didn't let me. He forbade it. And so, I went to my father, but I couldn't kiss him. They took him away, and it was the last time I saw him. I wouldn't see him anymore. They came looking for his father first. His father was hiding because they came looking for him to take him away. Then they found him, and they found all his uncles, and they took all, his, all the men in the family away. And then one day, they came and told them that they all had to leave. Some governments have been reticent to officially acknowledge the killings as a genocide because the governments of Turkey and their ally, Azerbaijan, are denying that it ever happened to begin with. They are threatening to close down their diplomatic and economic bonds with governments that claim the opposite. Because of this, many Armenians still to this day feel mistreated. Serge believes that it is because of this type of evil and ignorance that we allow more genocides to happen in the future. Luckily enough, as system became more popular, they were able to spread more awareness about the Armenian genocide by incorporating it as a central theme of their shows. It was a Turkish mayor that saved my grandmother. The government of Turkey should be hailing these saviors as heroes instead of denying the obvious history. We are system up and down and it's our responsibility to tell you these things and to rock you at the same time. Thank you. It's beautiful how Serge is able to combine his talent for music and art with social justice. As I discovered from watching many of his interviews, it seems like his passion to help people were there from the beginning, even before he started writing music. I remember stuff like my school and the streets and just specific visual memories of Lebanon. But I also remember the last few months where the schools were closed down and we couldn't, we couldn't leave the house because there were bombs going off everywhere. You can hear bombs falling in the sky. and It's a memory that doesn't leave you ever. And, and because everything affects everything else, you think that your life may not be affecting too many people, but it does. Your silence affects people. Your silence is sometimes more deadly than your words, and you don't know it. You know? When hearing about this, it becomes very clear why many of their music videos depict this, and why much of their lyricism talks about this. Modern globalization, coupled with condemnations, unnecessary death, but this is only the beginning of Serge's political involvement. Axis of Justice was an idea that Tom Morello came up with back in 2000, when he attended Ausfest. He was shocked and frustrated by the amount of white power and Nazi tattoos he saw people comfortably showing off at the show. System was headlining the Ausfest the next year, and it was at that point that Morello decided to contact Serge and tell him about his anti-racism message. They eventually got together and formed the nonprofit organization Axis of Justice. 
Over the years, they've helped people who suffer from starvation, kids who suffer from parents with drug abuse, homeless people, and they've also restored musical heritage. It seems like Serge simply wants to spread awareness about the unfair treatment of other people. Every day, someone's human rights are being ignored, and he sees it as his job to inform and inspire others to take action to prevent this. Now, in addition to writing amazing music with System of Down, Serge also released four solo albums, and it seems like he gained a lot more creative freedom when doing so. His first album resembles what he did with System of a Down. Imperfect Harmonies is more experimental, blending together classical music with rock. On Harakiri, he mixes together everything from beatbox to electronic music, while Orca Symphony No. 1 is purely a classical composition. He even released a jazz fusion album in 2013 with several prolific artists under the name Jazz as Christ. I think it's fair to say that Serge created a legacy just with his music, but for some reason he always finds inspiration to try out new forms of art. About being a creative person, he once said, I think creativity is there. It's like out in nature, out in the universe, subconscious, stream of consciousness, and we just have to tap into it. As artists, I think our job is to be good presenters of it. What we do throughout our lives in mastering what we do as artists is how we tap into that muse really well, and how do we present it to ourselves really well. In this journey to become a good presenter of creativity, he eventually found interest in painting and poetry. His painting in particular is quite interesting since he's got some very unique ways of approaching it. For example, he would fill these balloons with paint and smash it on the canvas, drive over his paintings with a car to give it an extra touch, I guess. And more interestingly, he would combine his paintings with music. He even went so far with this last experiment that he decided to dedicate a complete exhibition to it. For every painting on the exhibition, he would make a unique song and put an mp3 player on the flip side of the painting, along with speakers. Eventually, they developed an app that allowed users to scan the painting with their mobile camera and then hear the song through the app. This dualistic type of arch was a cool idea that really hit home with many of the visitors of the exhibition. When you listen to the music and you just look into the painting, you can feel the emotion of the mermaid or the woman singing. She feels pain. Serge's paintings allow him to put color and shapes into the world. But with poetry, he creates invisible colors and shapes in people's minds. In 2001, he released his first poetry book, Cool Gardens. It's a very dense book of 90 poems where he lets his words take the center of attention, while glaring through Oblivion, which he released a decade later, was more of a collaborative effort between him and illustrator Roger Kopelian, a guy who previously worked on some very ambitious projects, to say the least. What they ended up making was what Serge likes to call a coffee table book. You can easily pick it up and read a poem or two, or maybe you just feel like flipping through the artwork instead. I gotta tell you, before I read this book myself, I thought it was gonna be about something very gloomy and dark. I mean, it's, it's called Glaring Through Oblivion, and it has this post-apocalyptic scenery on the front. What else would you expect, right? But I actually found myself laughing, thinking hard, feeling confused, and even inspired when I read this. It was really far away from what I thought it would be like. Now, to conclude, I want to say that Serge is a perfect example of a person who just wants to express himself as openly as possible through Arch. He talks about the things that many other people won't talk about, the things that matter the most to him. And luckily enough, by combining his talents with his hunger for justice and beauty, he's been able to change the lives of so many people out there. Serge, if I'm lucky enough to get you watching this, then I just want to say Wow, and also thank you so much for just being you, man. Thank you. I also want to thank you guys, of course, for watching this.